What's going on guys? In this video we're going to cover the Apache install kind of playbook for the Red Hat Certified Engineer Cert. So this would cover what you need to know. Now I'm not going to go into all the background stuff. I do assume that you have some Linux knowledge and ability at this point, like if you don't know how to use a package manager yet, you should watch those videos first. This also assumes that you've got some box to try this on, whether it's a local virtual machine, um, something like a Raspberry Pi on your network, or a box out on the net, uh, that's what I've got set up here. So I just made a small digital ocean droplet, and I am using that droplet now. I've just created a key and connected to it. And so now we can start talking about Apache. So Apache is still the most popular web server out there. It's the only one that the Red Hat cert cares about. Um, the reality is that Apache is losing popularity and in many, many, many use cases is being replaced by Nginx and other perhaps smaller uh, web servers. Um, like the default web server on OpenBSD and stuff has changed. They've written a small purpose-built one. Nginx is taking over a lot of the sort of big tech market because it's so good at caching um, and a couple other things. But Apache is still around to stay, and it's just very, very likely that you'll run into it, and it's not just something you need to know for the cert, and then you never have to deal with it again. Again, chances are you're going to run into Apache, and hopefully this video will prepare you for what you need to do. If I look at the IP of my server here, this is a public IP, so I'm going to grab this IP, and I'm just going to open a browser tab with this IP just to demonstrate that nothing's installed yet, and I don't have a web server here. My VM is not accepting connections on port 80 at this IP address. So let us begin configuring this thing. There's a couple ways to install Apache. The package, uh, if you were just to install it with yum, is called HTTPD, the HTTP daemon. But that alone is not going to install everything you need for a basic, uh, for, well, for all but the most basic installs. So what we're going to do is actually install a package group. I should also note that we're going to be using uh, Apache 2.4. There's a good chance that you'll run into a, an Apache 2.2 version, or just a much older version, but I'm just prepping you for the future here. So I'm going to say yum group info web server. This is the one we're going to be installing. So let's just have a look at what that actually means. It's a lot more than just the HTTP server, just Apache. So in this group, the manual is included. Uh, crypto utilities, a bunch of uh, modules are included, like you can deal with SSL right off the bat, um, which should sort of be standard for any real life setup you're doing these days. Um, and there are optional packages, uh, like for caching, uh, different sort of CGI modules and that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is install that group, but I do want to show you a fancier, larger group. So this basic web server group actually installs multiple uh, other groups. So you have the base one, the core one, the web server group, um, and then you've got all these sort of like extra groups that you can use for, for example, oh, I'm going to be setting up something with MySQL or with MariaDB or for a Python uh, web application or use something using uh, the Postgres database or PHP language. So that sort of gets you a lot of modules that you would need to go and like painstakingly install by themselves. All nicely kind of packaged already in a group in a package group but again this is a little bit too big for what I'm showing here I'm just showing basic Apache 2.4 configuration just what you need for the RHCE cert so we know we want this web server group so now go ahead and just do uh, yum group install web server and this is going to go out and fetch all of our delicious stuff tell us what it's going to install and you can just hit Y and enter and we'll have a basic web server with some uh, fast CGI and SSL modules. So if you want to quickly check, obviously it's not going to be enabled for uh, start at boot. To check that, you can ask system D if it's uh, enabled at startup. HTTP D is the service or unit name. You can see that it's disabled here on boot. You could say if you wanted to enable it, systemctl, enable, httpd, and now it's going to be started at boot. But now remember, 
that just because it's going to be started on next boot doesn't mean it's actually started right now. So if we actually say status, it's going to be inactive. So there's two ways to start it. Obviously, there's the system D way to start it, which is sysctl or systemctl start httpd, and that's well and good. But the thing I want you to remember is that there is an Apache specific server or service management tool called Apache CTL. And we can tell that things like start, stop, or graceful, like please gracefully reload your config files without like killing off any connections uh, or otherwise causing an outage. So Apache CTL graceful is something you'll use a lot. So this is having some issues right now because we haven't configured a uh, fully qualified domain name, I believe, for this box. So we're not telling uh, Apache definitively where to listen, and it can't quite figure that out because our host name isn't uh, actually a valid host name or fully qualified domain name. So what we're going to say is Apache CTL um, start, and that failed. This is lovely. Pgrep httpd. Let's have a look. That is, <laughs> that's actually running. So this thing is freaking out that it can't work, but if I reload the page here, I can see that this is actually working just fine. So we're gonna go clean up the uh, config in a second anyway, and then this stuff will start working predictably. You can also test this with curl uh, HTTP localhosts. So that will actually just go out and fetch the page and return it uh, here. Just You can see this is just like a plain text markup. Ooh, that's a lot of CSS. Um, are you serious? They're using Bootstrap. Is everyone drinking the Kool-Aid now? Man, you know, sometimes I just feel like... Anyway, so apparently the Apache test page now needs to load, you know, 500 kilobytes of Kinks CSS. All right. Uh, okay. So here we are. We've got this thing installed, and let's talk about the default uh, config files and, and where they are. Okay, so the main config file for Apache is in etc httpd, just start thinking of Apache as httpd. Um, on Red Hat and CentOS, it's going to be a lot easier. So Etsy httpd conf for the configurations, httpd.conf. Let's have a quick look at that main config file. So this config file is going to import or include all of the other config files that we use for, for example, a specific uh, website, the, like virtual host definitions, and you can see that the server root is going to be etsy httpd. Okay, we're going to listen on port 80 right here, standard web port. We're including everything in conf.modulesd. This is a relative path from here. So this would be etc httpd conf and then the directory conf.modules.d. And then everything in there, that's what this uh, asterisk globbing character stands for. Dot conf. So anything ending with dot .conf, all those files are going to be included. This directory is where any additional modules you install, that's where they have their config files. So for example, if you've got, um, if you've got an SSL conf file, if you've installed Lua bindings, or if you've installed uh, some CGI module, this is where the config files for those specific chunks of functionality would be just to keep things neat. So remember that. The Apache service is going to run as the, the process itself will be run as Apache Apache, so user and group Apache. The server admin email is not really important. Um, you're probably just going to black hole that on a production server. And then you've got your first container. So down here, you can see this kind of XML uh, syntax. So this is a directory container. There's a couple different kinds of containers that are sort of these config chunks. Um, this one is directory, but there are also containers for files and modules. So the beginning of this container starts with directory to say, hey, this is going to be a directory container. And this just basically sets a default a deny sort of rule, right? So just like if you're making a firewall rules, you start by making the default. If nothing else is like matched, everything ends up with a deny rule. And that's essentially the same principle here. So it's basically saying for everything that isn't specifically defined in some later in this config file or in another config file, 
this is going to be what happens. And what happens is nothing because we deny access. Here's another directory container. And this one, oh, sorry, first it sets the document root. So this is just, okay, our main document root is going to be var www html. So that's where these files, this markup is r. Uh oh, grammar lesson is next. Um, so this directory container is specific to var www. And here what we're saying is for this directory, we're actually going to relax those hard, hard, harsh, mean permissions of deny. And we're going to actually grant access here because that's specifically what we want to share. Everything else is still closed off because of that previous rule up here, right? All denied. We're also going to allow a couple extra options. Um, here, this is something I would recommend, just like reading in the docs, um, all the options you have available to you. But basically this just says, uh, oh yeah, it, this is telling you the same thing I'm telling you. Please just read up on what these are how specifically they work, um, it's more than one video can cover. So the options we're defining here just for this directory here in this container are indexes and follow symlinks. We're not allowing any overrides in htaccess files. Down here we've got this to deny web access to, to web clients for our HT access files should we be using them. Error log is being written to logs error log. Generally, I recommend doing what they recommend here, which is uh, having a separate config file for each virtual host, that is each website you run on the server, and then define a specific error log file for that virtual host container. I don't like this convention of just logging into the etc directory because var log is the directory that sysadmins the world over have agreed to log things into. And logging things into Etsy is just, in my opinion, just dirty and bad. But fine, this is the default. We can all live with it because we know that CentOS and Red Hat are special and have made special rules for themselves, as really have all the major distros. Okay, so I'm going to recommend changing this to var log HTTPD error log, but you can leave it as the default. Finally, we're going to be looking at some CGI bin stuff, I think, for this, uh, just because uh, the RHCE requires it. var www CGI bin is the directory where our common gateway interface binaries will be kept, that is, our scripts, and we're going to grant access to those here. So that's just another directory container allowing access to our CGI bin scripts. That'll come in handy uh, a little bit later. Okay, so that's a very basic introduction to the Apache install and very basic overview of the Apache uh, config file. In the next video, I'm going to show you just a quick way to set up your first virtual host, so your first kind of website on the server. It's going to be pretty quick and we'll just kind of use some of the uh, configuration directives and the containers that we saw in the config file just to make sure that you can actually apply this knowledge. So I'll see you there.